there were a lot more cousins and a lot more grandchildren. So my grandparents would give each of the grandchildren $20 and then the whole family would go bowling Christmas day in the evening. And those are some of the sweetest memories. Like it didn't need to be a tree full of presents. The gift was time together. Isn't that what we're trying to create for our children, our grandchildren, our neighbors, yeah. our church community? It's about just remembering Jesus and loving people. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Zan Tyler podcast, where our goal is to help you thrive in your homeschool journey. Before we begin today's episode, I just want to remind you to subscribe to this wherever you listen or watch, including YouTube, and leave us a review if this podcast has encouraged you. Leaving a review also helps other homeschool parents like you find our podcast. And as always, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook for more content. Today, I am so excited to welcome my dear friend, Nancy Manos, with me today. We are going to be talking about searching for joy during this Christmas season. And if there's such a thing, Nancy is a joy expert. I'm always learning from her. So stay tuned. I think you're really going to be encouraged by this episode. When my family started our homeschooling journey, there were so many decisions to make. But one of our best decisions was choosing to use BJU Press Homeschool. I've never seen my kids so excited to get textbooks before. I'm amazed by how interesting and interactive the lessons are. My kids actually look forward to them. We use the online video lessons for all our courses, but I know some families choose to teach from the textbooks. What I love is that I can trust BJU Press to uphold our values. The Bible and biblical principles are woven throughout each subject. I'll admit, I was a bit nervous when I started homeschooling, but I've found a wonderful online community of other BJU Press homeschool families and consultants. The Homeschool Hub also makes my job easier. I can set up our schedules and rearrange them with just a few clicks. On the dashboard, I can see each of my kids' progress, and the assignments page shows me quickly what's ready for me to check or grade. I'm glad my son's biology assignments are automatically graded. BJU Press Homeschool has given us the tools and confidence to homeschool our children. For more information, do what I did and visit the BJU Press Homeschool website or talk with your local HomeWorks consultant. All right, so on today's episode, Nancy and I will be talking about searching for joy this Christmas season. So wherever you are during this season, the highs and lows, the joys and sorrows, we want to share from our heart and we want you to walk away free to enjoy this holiday season. There's one thing we do know, Nancy and I, from being a child, having children of our own, and now having grandchildren, the holidays are always changing. And they they bring different circumstances and different things that we all need to deal with, as well as greater joys. And so today, we just want to talk to you about family traditions, things you're doing, and things you can do to make your holidays a little less stressful and a little more enjoyable. Uh, I love something Nancy said to me yesterday while we were talking about this podcast. I'm going to read it because I don't want to mess up any of the words. Sometimes we can't reduce the to-do list, but we can ma manage our expectations and our stress level. Um, I know for one that when I was a child, I used to have these humongous expectations for Christmas and I was always reading different books and I would tell my mother, this is what they did for Christmas and this is what an old timey Christmas looked like. Mom told me later I put so much pressure on her at Christmas, she thought she would just die sometimes. And so we want to talk about managing those expectations, taking a few things off the table, maybe bringing more joy, but always, always, always focusing on the relationship with your children. Because at the end of the day, you want traditions that bond the family together and not pull you apart because it adds too much stress. So with that rather long introduction, I want to say, Nancy, thank you so much for being here. And thank you oh, for absolutely. all you do for so many people, um, for me, for homeschoolers everywhere, and for your family. 
Well, it's a joy to be able to join you today and to talk about this really important subject as we're approaching Christmas very quickly here. Um, I, you know, you and I were chatting yesterday as we prepared for this and, and just thinking about my own childhood. You know, what what was Christmas like as a kid for me? And then as a mom making Christmas for my children, and then now as a grandma, you know, we're in those different seasons. And so we were chatting about some of our childhood memories yesterday. And I was thinking back to, you know, we live in this world of Instagram and HGTV and, you know, the Hallmark Channel or Great American Family Channel with the, all the Christmas movies. And I was actually watching one the other day thinking about how every room in every house and every store is decorated to the hilt and all the characters were wearing red and green and it was so <laughs> unusually <laughs> over the top. Right, but yeah. I think sometimes we can have that expectation that we need to do the excessive, that we need to make it spectacular for it to be special. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was growing up for about seven years, I lived next door to my grandparents. We lived in in Minneapolis, it's a double bungalow. Some people call it a duplex, but it's basically two houses that you know share a middle wall. And my grandparents lived on one side and my family lived on the other. And these were tiny houses. Like, I don't know if my grandma had 48 inches of workspace in her kitchen. Like it was very tiny and they were not together, you know, like a little counter here and a little counter there, but she did all the Christmas baking. And we did our Christmas dinner in their unfinished basement, cement walls, cement floor, studs, and her big, beautiful dining room table with her china and the whole family, all the aunts and uncles and the cousins gathered around. And looking back, I think, you know, if you, you would never take a picture of that and go, oh, this is so special. But I have cherished memories of laughing with my cousins and my listening to my aunts and uncles tell stories and eating delicious food that grandma made every year and then enjoying cookies and unwrapping, you know, presents and that kind of thing. And so it doesn't have to be that Pinterest worthy, Instagram worthy, mm -hmm. you know, right. Christmas, if that makes sense for it to be special. You know, that makes so much sense. And one thing you said as we were talking that set me free, free, free beyond measure was that a couple of times lately, you and James have put up your Christmas tree with just lights. And yeah. um, Joe and I have had a, um, a rougher Christmas season than normal. His 99-year-old dad, whom we love, and is, he's our last living parent, uh, is in hospice now. And so that's been time consuming. I had a back yeah. injury that's kind of caused some other things and I haven't been a hundred percent. And so we, we never, I mean, I am always the one we're cutting down the Christmas tree or we're at least going to a lot. And my mother, um, bless her heart, she's in heaven now, would die again if she knew that we had an artificial <laughs> Christmas tree. But I just happened to run into this thrift stop, shop that had this enormous perfect Christmas tree that somebody had brought in. Um, I think they were moving on to assisted living. I had the lights on and everything. I told wow. Joe, go back and buy that. And we put that up and I keep looking at the lights. There's so many things I want to do with the grandkids this year. And um, I've got limited energy and I'm thinking, I just love this tree with these lights and it may stay this way the rest of Christmas. So yeah. you sort of help me manage. And I mean, I have boxes of Christmas tree ornaments, but you kind of help me manage that expectation because I want to have the energy to enjoy everybody who's here rather than being yeah. tired and crabby all the time. Right. It's yeah. so true. You know, and that is something we have done where I just have decided my lit tree and a few little, I collect those little felt birds from, I think they're from Target or I've seen them at other places. They're like $5 little felt birds and they're cute. And I put them everywhere. I have about 30 of them. I get two or three each year just when I'm out shopping. But that's sometimes that's it. And that's enough. I mean, it's enough to just when when you turn off all the other lights and you turn the tree on, like, don't you just feel that peace? Yes, um, it's so totally. sweet to do yes. Bible time in the morning or at night, just in the peace of the house with just the tree lit. And um, so I think it can be special because it isn't even about all of that fuss and muss. It's about 
Jesus, right? <laughs> um, and so if we can just enjoy our family and remember to keep our focus on the Lord, then even those, if it's the most basic, simple Christmas, it's enough. Yeah. And, you know, we are not promoting just simplicity for those of you who have been able to do this yes. extravagantly this year. I mean, we think that's great too, but yes. we're just, our thing is just, you know, set your fr yourself free from the expectations in the movie on Pinterest and do what's good for your family. Yep. Um, and I've been thinking a lot this year about what true joy is and what it uh, what it has to do with circumstances. And Nancy and I, one of my first three podcasts, I think, was Nancy and I talking about joy. I would encourage you to go back and listen to that. But I've actually been reading this book right now uh, by Madeline Lingle. I love her books. I love her writing. And um, she has a book called A Rock That Is Higher. And she has these two quotes about joy in those books. And I want to read these to you. My faith is more a matter of joy than security, which I thought was really mm, profound. Uh, and then joy is often at its deepest when it comes in times of trial and pain. And so there is so much joy at the Christmas season. And then there's also a lot of sorrow for people who have lost parents or children or spouses or jobs, you know. Um, and and so I, I think it's good to remember, you know, I certainly like being happy. You know, I'm not here to dis happiness today. Yeah. But she, she, you know, she makes the point that true joy doesn't depend on being happy and having all the right circumstances, but it can handle incorporating pain and sorrow into your existence and still have joy. So, so we just want to acknowledge that the holidays are wonderful, yes. but they also can bring its own stress and its own um, sorrows with it. And that's life and that's okay. And um, like Nancy said, we want to put the Lord first and we just want to have bonding time with our children that they remember as they leave our homes, you know, and go, go forward really into the world. Absolutely. You know, Zan, it's so sweet thinking back again to my own childhood. We would do Christmas Eve with my mom's family and then Christmas Day with my dad's family. And there were a lot more cousins and a lot more grandchildren on my dad's side. And so my grandparents would give each of the grandchildren $20. That was our Christmas gift. And then the whole family would go bowling Christmas Day in the evening. And those are some of the sweetest memories. Like it didn't need to be a tree full of presents. It was a present. The gift was time together. And so I just have lots of special memories. And isn't that what we're trying to create for our children, our grandchildren, our neighbors, yes. our church community, everybody we interact with? It's about the joy of the Lord, you know, and it's about just remembering Jesus and loving people. Like there's so much that we have to be thankful for. And I just I love that. So we can create, you know, you and I talked a lot about experiences over gifts. Now I am one of those grandmas. I want to buy everything on my grandkids list. I was like that as a mom. Like I like a tree full of presents and I, I'm, I'm not grandma. So, and I also was that mom, but, but in addition to that, it's so fun to do that, like drive around and look at Christmas lights and, you know, stop for hot chocolate or, um, or, you know, do those special things. So what were some of the experiences that you enjoyed with your kids or that you're enjoying now with your grandkids? You know, it's funny because as I was thinking about my life growing up, um, my husband, Joe, growing up had 99 aunts, uncles, and first cousins. Wow. Um, I had four aunts and uncles and three cousins. And so our life was a lot quieter in that regard. But I do remember having family in at Christmas. My mother was a great cook and we'd have a wonderful Christmas meal. And I began to think about my memories at home. And then also my memories with our kids. We did a lot of cooking, um, some baking, but a lot of cooking and a lot of people in. And I love cooking for big crowds. So we just would have a couple of times where we would have big crowds. And I thought about this, um, the connection between Christmas and food um, right now. I can't gain any more weight over the holidays. I'm barely in the clothes I have right now. But, you know, it's um, it, it, 
there's so much in the Bible about Jesus feeding people and the marriage banquet of the lamb, Jesus cooking for the disciples on the beach, roasting fish. And, you know, there's, and Jesus says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you let me in, I will come into you and sup with you. I mean, he, there's so much, um, so much that happens in scripture around food and just the intimacy of eating together and having yeah. meals together. And I think that's really a joy of the holidays is having that time to have those, those special meals and those, those just special experiences together. Um, I did, I did think back to my own childhood and um, maybe, maybe some people have had experiences like mine. I have one toy that I remember getting. Now, my mother did a great job of having presents under the tree and it was fun. I had two sisters and we would spend time opening. Um, but the one Christmas present I remembered was this little doll baby that came with a cast and crutches, which for some reason I thought was the coolest thing. And, um, and then I was thinking one of my daughter's most precious memories is this talking doll baby. She had wanted all year so she ended up taking her to my parents christmas eve new year i mean christmas eve service which i think was like at 11 o'clock at night but lizzie could handle it so we would all go with my parents and this baby doll starts talking in the middle of this very quiet service. oh my gosh we could not figure out how to turn her off and my mother is looking at me everybody the church are, so joe just walks out with the baby patting the baby on the back it looked like this real baby doll and this real talking baby doll so, <laughs> you know. so you know it's funny just the little memories you have that mean so much we would always get up after christmas and opening presents and go visit one of our grandparents so they lived in Earhart, south carolina and then um in charlotte and so you know just Things were not over the top then like they are now yeah. in terms of decorations and all of that. But it was very meaningful, um, special, sweet, and sometimes simple memories. Yeah. You know, you shared with me before, too, about how didn't your family do the widow's baskets? Was that at Christmas time? Yes, yes, that was, you know, so as we talk about experiences, Nancy, and I've written down a list of things that you and I both have done as experiences with our kids, but um, one of the greatest experiences we had as a family was just um, increased service opportunity over the holidays. And, you know, I was, I was with my grandsons um, the other day and they're, they're 11, 13 and 16 now. And we were the three oldest grandsons. Uh, and we were just talking about that scripture verse that is from James, but it talks about visiting orphans and widows in their stress, in their distress is just what God considers extremely important and valuable. And uh, they were, they were going with me to visit Joe's dad. And, uh, you know, I said, there's just so much scripture scriptural and so much biblical joy and importance put on those things. But years ago, when we started homeschooling, the boys were four and six, and this was before the day of support groups and where you could go do service opportunities together. I mean, we didn't know anybody else in the world who was homeschooling. So I, I really wanted us to be involved in service projects and nobody wanted you know, they said, get a babysitter for the kids, put the kids in school, then you come help us. We'd love to have your help. And so the more I prayed about it, the more the Lord just brought this verse to me. And we had about between 20 or 30 widows in our church at the time. And I got the name and we started making widow baskets that first year. And I am not crafty. Oh my word, Nancy, you know how uncrafty and unartistic I am with with visuals and uh, but we would we would make an ornament every year we would make a craft we would cook something and put them in the widow baskets and i just want to encourage you um the more you serve together as a family the better it gets you're going to have good times and bad times great service projects and things you think are failures um, and i can remember delivering 20 widow baskets that first year to the widows in our church and the they came to the door and the boys we had had them memorize christmas carols and like 
10 or 12 Bible verses, even when they were little, and they would say all those things. And it was nice. It wasn't anything great, but it was a good way for us to spend our Christmas. But we continued that for about 10 or 12 years, I guess. And it really became a focus of our Christmas. So the more the boys got to, and then Lizzie was born later, um, and the more they got to know the widows in the church, then they would ask us in and have little gifts for the the kids and have refreshments for us and you know i'll never forget i think my most special christmas memory ever is when the boys were teenagers and they were um upstairs plotting something which always made me a little nervous you know so <laughs> I, went, I went upstairs to find out exactly what was going on and they said, well, mom, dad's, my husband, Joe, used to travel with his work. Dad's going to, we figured out how many days we have now left between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Daddy's going to be gone this many days. And we've got 22 baskets to deliver. And how are we going to do this? Because we have to stay and visit with Miss Yates and Miss Vincent. And, you know, and they had this list of what everybody liked. And, you know, and, and they were driving the whole thing at this point. And it was so special to me now. Don't get me wrong. They still had plenty of time to tell me what they wanted for Christmas. It's not <laughs> like we didn't do gifts. But the focus really became at that point in time on the needs of these widows in our congregation. And, you know, just the blessing in that was when they went off to college i can they would come home and you know i wanted to just never let them go again but they would um sit with a lot of the widows in the church during the church services and it turns out that they ended up being a large part of the boys prayer support when they were in college but you know my husband joe often talks about shared experiences just are so bonding yeah. on the Christmas side of things. When we're having those shared experiences with our families and our spouses, it's really that glue and cement that holds us all together. So true. That's so beautiful. I, I'm so glad you shared that. I've always loved when you talk about that season, all the things that you did to serve with your kids. You know, that's one of the blessings of homeschooling. Our kids are with us. We can volunteer together, whether it's doing something at church or in the community. And I love that we're modeling that for our children, uh, a lifestyle of service, um, because, you know, isn't we're the hands and feet of Jesus, right? And That's so right. it right. isn't just us going off to volunteer, like you said, get a babysitter for your kids and you can come help. It's so precious to be able to do those things with our children. Um, and just to, for them to get to see the joy of giving to someone and blessing someone else. You know, it really is true that it is more blessed to give than to receive. God calls us to give to others. The results are left up to him. Yeah. And, and you never know what the results are going to be and what they might mean later on. Yeah, that's so true. So, Nancy, you are much craftier than I am. So, so much of our stuff around Christmas revolved against, uh, uh, you know, going to performances and serving and being out and about because I was so uncrafty. But tell us some of the fun things you did with your girls. Well, we did a lot of craft type things. And um, I, I remember one time we had some, I think the girls were probably middle school age-ish. Of course, we didn't do grade levels, so I never remember, um, you know, what grades they were in. But we had this group of friends. So there was a homeschool PE um, class in our in the Phoenix area of Arizona that they would meet at different parks. And that's where we made the bulk of our friends when we first moved here. And for the first, I don't know, uh, number of years, we were in this weekly PE class with a bunch of homeschool families. And it was so much fun. Um, and of course, being in Arizona, we can be outside most of the year, except in the summer. Um, but these girls that my girls met at PE became good friends. And so we did a Christmas. It wasn't a Christmas tea, but it kind of had that feel to it. So we had crafts and we had treats and we had, you know, um, some kind of special beverage, maybe a punch or something that we made. But just a sweet time to come together. And these girls all talked about you know, what God was doing in their life. And it just was a sweet, one of those, you know, little gatherings, but I had bought some stuff to make an ornament. And so we did those kind of things um, a lot in my, 
in our in our homeschool journey. Um, and we, we made a lot of homemade things like, you know, for Christmas decorations and gifts and things like that. And um, some of those years were super stressful for me because if you have kids that are in piano lessons or dance classes or whatever, all the recitals happen in December. Yes, that's right. You have all that's the activities right. at church. Everybody's planning a party. There's, oh, there's so many things going on. Um, and so what we did was we took off from Thanksgiving through New Year's. We didn't do any formal schoolwork. We put away our school books. Okay, I, okay. we got to stop there for just a minute. We got to park here for just a minute. Park. Okay. I think this is so, so amazing that Nancy did this. I, I could not do that. I, I was... I just didn't feel like I had permission to do that. I probably, I started homeschooling in 84. What year did you start homeschooling? Uh, it was in? like 95. Yep. So, you know, so a decade later, there are more homeschoolers and more, really more freedom in your homeschooling experience. But I just want to encourage y'all to listen to Nancy and what this did in her family life and see if it's, a remote possibility in your situation. I wish, sure. I wish there's so many years. I wish I'd done that. So, all right. So Nancy, tell us how you did it. So each year it would look a little bit different, you know, and we moved to Arizona when our girls were five and seven. And so we would often have a grandma, um, either James's mom or my mom would come out and visit during the holidays or at different times of year. So we just took beauty of homeschooling. We took breaks when family came to visit. Um, but we right. would basically Thanksgiving was, you know, Thanksgiving week was the end of our formal schooling. Um, but we were doing educational things. We were doing read alouds. We were doing, um, you know, I'd have the kids do some kind of creative writing or they, it also gave them time to go explore and have time. Like Alex, our youngest loved to do wood burning. Um, and the girls love to do painting and drawing. And so they could just get out their craft supplies and have hours to really dive into their craft or whatever they were working on without having to be like, OK, it's time to do math, you know. And then, of course, they were helping me bake and cook and plan for events we were hosting or serving at church. And so they were getting, you know, all sorts of education. It just wasn't from a work. Absolutely. Yes. You know, and what yes. it did was it relieved the pressure. Like I was, the thing that stressed me out the most was driving to dance classes three nights a week and then, and then the rehearsals and then the <laughs> recital and then we had piano and yes. like, I didn't want to be that stressed out crabby mom. And some of those things made me a little crabby. Like if I have to drive to dance one more time, <laughs> you know, and James was traveling quite a bit at the time similar to yeah. your situation. So it was a lot just on me. Um, and so I wanted the holiday to be restful and sweet. And, you know, and so we did that. We took off through New Year. Um, by January 3rd, though, we were ready to get back into a routine where we were sitting at the table together, discussing history and our Bible lesson and science and doing school together. But it was really a nice time for us to be able to volunteer at church and do all the things without the added pressure and expectation of you must also finish your schoolwork. So it helped me. I, I, it was really liberating. Yes. And, and, you know, I think it's so important what you said that there is a lot of education that goes on in our children's lives that comes from experiences um, and reinforces everything they've learned in school, but is a totally a different type of learning, but just as important. Yeah, um, you know, the, the performances that our kids were in at church or dance or whatever, those are, those are really important things. How do you have stage presence? How do you speak? How do you sing in front of a group? All of that, those are really important learning things. Thanks for being with us today for part one of this two-part series on searching for true joy during the Christmas season. 
As always, you can follow me at zantyler.com and you can find Nancy at nancymanos.com. I want to take a minute just to thank you for being with us during this session, spending that time with us. We treasure each one of you. We pray that you will have a very Merry Christmas and please make sure you and you join us next week for part two of this episode. Until next time, may God continue to bless your family. Bye.